Okay, let's dive in. Let, let's let's start talking about socialization and probably the biggest mistake that people make mm-hmm. uh, when it comes to socialization. So why don't we sort of take that as our jumping off yeah, point? Absolutely. So do you want to start with that? Yeah. Um, so lots of times, especially with people who get new dogs or they have young dogs, puppies, socialization is a real focus for people. And um, what we wanted to do is just sort of give you a broader idea of what socializing your, socializing your dog actually means so that you can set your dog up for, um, for a lot of success. Um, you know, most of the time when you think about socializing dogs, the very first thing people go to is dogs playing with other dogs. And that's like one small small, 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 small piece of socialization that in our opinion, when we have young dogs is actually not super important. Um, the bigger thing is to socialize your dog more, um, more broadly. So, right. you know, things like getting them to expose to new places, new sounds, new surfaces, new people, um, those types of things are really, um, where you should be starting. Socializing with other dogs is a very tricky subject and it can be done very well and it can also be done horribly so we want to educate you guys today on what we've learned is sort of the kind of a a good way to go about this based on our own experience with our own dogs and also the thousands of dogs that we've seen come through our classes because we've seen lots of um lots of different situations um in thing dogs that have really improved through socialization again not specifically with dogs but just broadly um and then also on the flip side dogs who have had poor socialization experiences maybe with other dogs or dog parks or what you know just walking down the street sometimes and you know sort of what that can do to your dog and also with what your what can happen with your relationship with your dog so we thought this would be a really important uh topic to take to talk to you about tonight if i could speak that would be really helpful for this live stream it's gonna be a long show long show (laughs) i will get better i promise so i i was just as you were talking there i was just thinking a lot of you guys um maybe in a situation with all that's going on in the world right now uh, that you're going to have a little bit more time with your dogs. You're going to be able to focus a little bit more on working with them. The challenge might be that you're not able to get to some of these uh, busier environments. So we know and when it comes to socialization that it's sort of in layers. So uh, why don't we just sort of cover like a handful of things that we socialize dogs to mm-hmm. and then we can maybe talk about some specific situations that you guys can focus can on. Can you here set aside this question? Uh, yep. Yep. Um, yeah. So when we have, uh, puppies or if we have older dogs, um, we try specifically to expose our dogs to a lots of different things when we feel that they're ready. So if we have a really young dog, um, I'm a little bit apprehensive to take my young puppy, like say under four months on, um, on a walk, for example. And that's usually really shocking to people. We don't walk our baby puppies. Um, yeah, not at all. We, because, you know, I don't really, before I've really established some control and some relationship and some trust and bond between me and my pup, I don't necessarily want to expose them to loud trucks or new people and dogs on the street that I might not know and those types of things. I'm going to really build a lot of value on me and um, um, relationship building, all that kind of stuff, just me and the puppy. Um, But what I am going to do when I have that young puppy, once it has its proper vaccines, of course, is I might take the puppy different places and I might, you know, let different people say hello to the puppy or give the puppy some treats or, you know, those types of things. I actually focus a lot more on people and places and things right. uh, first before I deal with other dogs. And there's a couple of reasons why we do it this way. Um, number one is we find that dogs will bond to dogs very, very, very quickly, which can be good, but also can be really challenging when you're trying to um, establish some type of relationship with your with your dog. So for example, when we have um, a new puppy, or if we, we actually have I brought in an older dog into our pack a few years ago, um, we did a lot of um, isolation. So we have all of the dogs that are used to being together, and then we have the puppy separate. We spend a ton of one-on-one time with that puppy or that new dog, building a bond, doing some training, teaching the puppy that, you know, the sun shines out of our ears and that they really, really like it so that when we're challenged by having a dog there as a distraction, the dogs already had many, many, many repetitions of choosing us and being rewarded for that without too many distractions or competition around. So that's something that we really focus on. 
Um, yeah, and remember, you know, your puppy, those dogs speak the same language already. And mm -hmm. we're really trying to teach our puppy or our young dogs in training to listen to us, to understand what we're uh, trying to tell them, what we're trying to ask of them. So don't mm -hmm. make it any harder on yourself than it already is. Yeah. Um, and so then we'll, um, setting the dog thing aside for a second, because we'll go back to that and speak about it in depth. Um, is the you know sights and sounds and things and, and places those types of things um again i'm going to be really careful it's really important when your puppy is especially if you have a puppy that's young and, and even if you have an older dog that maybe isn't super confident that every new situation that you put your dog in your puppy in is going to be one that is positive or if it if there's a possibility of not, it not being positive, you making sure that you have a really clear out. Yeah. Um, because we need to be our dog's advocate. And at the end of the day, we want our dog to feel really comfortable and confident and secure when they have us with them and that they don't feel like they need to be the one to kind of set the tune or be protective or that type of thing. We want them just to sit back and relax knowing that we're going to take care of all of those things for them and we're going to keep them safe. Now, that doesn't mean coddling the dog or um, rewarding, you know, worried behavior behavior it just means you know being confident and making good choices so that our dogs are are being able to be set up for success um when we have young dogs you know uh, ken and i live you know not really in the city we live outside the city um so our dogs you know we don't have sidewalks or anything like that um we do have people around our house but not a lot so we try to make a special effort to expose our dogs to different things so you know when our especially when our dogs are young we throw them in the car we take a quick uh car ride down to you know downtown Burlington or Dundas or whatever it happens to be. And um, we'll just walk the dog around the town. We'll get them around people. We don't even necessarily interact with people. We just get right. them around the different places and sounds. We did that a lot with Beeline, our youngest dog, um, just to expose her to different things. And initially, she was a little bit overwhelmed by it. So we sort of... Um, we did it very calmly and very slowly mm -hmm. as she started to get more comfortable. And initially, I didn't really worry about her interacting with people or things because that was a bit too much for her. And as we started to experience this more, you know, she was like, okay, we've done this five or six times. I think I'm pretty more, you know, I'm more relaxed. Then we would start to incorporate having more people saying hello to her and different things like that. But we sort of let her dictate the pace. Uh, but at the same time, we were always headed towards how can we build this up? How can we make it more successful? How can we find growth here? Right, absolutely. Um, I, I think uh, we were just I was just shooting a video with instructor Lauren um, a few days ago, and she, um, in if you're if you have a small breed dog, so especially a small breed puppy, make sure you check out Saturday morning's video. It's 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 for you. It's exactly. Uh, we have so many people on the channel that are saying like, I wish you had more stuff for small breed dogs. Now, this is going to be your opportunity to check that out. But uh, at, at one point um, when Lauren and I were chatting, when we were shooting the video, she mentioned, you know, think of socialization as confidence building. That's really what you're doing. You're giving your dog all these experiences to build more confidence. And that's, you know, changing your frame of mind because we think of socialization of, with being social with other uh, uh, humans, you know, in, interacting and engaging uh, with other people. But for dogs, it's not, that's not their, the focus. That mustn't be your focus if you want to have some expectation that they're going to listen. One of the, um, it's funny, we'll, we'll get um, students, you know, we have all, all kinds of grade one students and grade one and our, our My Dog Camp program is kind of the same thing, but grade one is our uh, like family dog obedience, walk on a loose leash, come when called, sit and stay, all that stuff. So uh, we'll, we'll see a dog who really struggles in uh, when they're working on like their stay, for example, or walking on leash, they're really interested in visiting with the other dogs. And that handler has to you know, work a little bit harder or, or we'll give them some advice to, to get, um, to, to, for them to be successful. But what we some, what we'll find, and this is, this happened to me just the other day, was the uh, owner said, oh, you know, uh, actually to tire her out a little bit, I let her uh, go play with a bunch of other dogs because I thought that would help me out. Uh, and now he has the expectation that his dog is going to remain in at his side and not be distracted by those other dogs when she's just had 25, 30 minutes of being rewarded by playing with, chasing, uh, engaging, interacting with all of these other dogs. What are your expectations? Do you expect that your dog can walk on a loose leash and not pull when another dog comes around? If that's your goal, then you really need to think about how am I going to set this up? How am I going to make it so that I'm more valuable? Your dog ultimately will, here's the thing, your dog ultimately will have these opportunities to 
interact and play with other dogs. However, they need a foundation of listening first. You mm -hmm. need to know that you can be successful. And socialization is a big, big part of this, making them comfortable with the experience of new places, of uh, being around people. All of these things are really, it's building blocks. Mm -hmm. And you need to focus on the foundation. And socialization is foundational training for your dog. I think it's really important to say, like, what we're suggesting to you is not long term. This is just while the dogs are, are young or inexperienced or new to you, we want you to really create a really solid bond and focus and some training and control first before you really focus on letting the dogs go play. Um, you know, this afternoon I went on, um, you know, my my family has a, a very big property where our training school is, 22 acres, and myself and three other instructors took all of our dogs on a huge walk, and I think we had five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven dogs with us, all off leash, and, um, you know, they were playing together and running together, and, you know, every couple of minutes, we would practice calling, you know, one dog back and rewarding them, and then sending back out, and then we would yell, lie down, and all of the dogs would lie down in the field, okay, and then we'd let them run around, so even though they were playing and having a, just a whale of a time, at the end of the day, if we needed or wanted control, we could do that. And the way we were able to accomplish being able to have that much control is because we didn't start out by letting them play with other dogs and just sort of taking off in the field and ignoring us. We would go out individually with them or go out with them on a long line and work on calling them back to us away from a distraction and teaching them what our expectation was and how to do it successfully so that the value was more about us over and over and over and over and right. over again until our dogs basically said, ooh, and I come back to you, great things happen I prefer to be with you and then once we got that over um, out of the way then we would let the dogs go and have a little bit more freedom now you've just watched some content from our main channel McCann dog training and if you'd like some more training information on this topic click that card right there if this is your first time on our clips channel and you really enjoy the short form content make sure you subscribe hit that button right there on that note I'm Ken happy training